you know, if you're investing, real estate's a great place to invest. If you're trying to raise capital, don't give up. You know, when something doesn't work, just keep trying and do it. You know, and if you keep sticking with it, you'll you'll find a solution and, and you'll make it work. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, and I'm so excited to have my guest today. He has raised in his career over $100 million in private money. So you think you might be able to pick up a tip or two on today's show on how to attract some private money. In addition to that, he has overseen the completion of more than $500 million in new construction projects. Uh, and this is a spanning over 50 different projects. Well, most importantly, the foundation and his core beliefs rest on faith and family. Um, in fact, faith and family guides everything that he does, just like myself. In just a moment, you're going to meet my special guest, Dale Wills, right after this. Well, hello there, Dale, and welcome to the show. Jay, thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you, Dale, and what a lot of experience that you've got in this space of real estate investing and raising private money. You're going to be able to share a lot of value to our audience. And so where are you located in the country? And, uh, and tell us where your projects have been uh, located. We're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, most of our projects are in Minnesota. We are starting to branch out and do projects throughout the nation, but our focus has been and currently is in the Minnesota market. Right. Now, has most of your projects and real estate investing been in uh, new construction? Uh, primarily. We've done some um, value add apartment complexes that were in disrepair that we bought and repositioned. Most of what we've done has been in development or new construction. Got you. So what was, uh, did you start raising private money for your business at the very beginning or did you use other types of funding and then you migrated into uh, raising private capital? When we first started Centra Capital, we started, the idea came in 2010 and we launched in January of 2011. And that's, uh, you know, the real estate market was in, in uh, disarray at that point. And we had raised uh, a fair amount, a few million dollars, um, which is a fair amount when you're first getting going um, to get going. But we also worked with a lot of banks. And so we were working with banks on their distressed assets, helping them work through those assets to get them off of their books. And so we were pretty fortunate early on being able to use bank money, the same you would use private equity. Sure. Yeah. I started out back in 2003 and I relied on banks until 2009, my first six years, until all that fell apart. So it was totally out of need that I had to find a better and quicker way to get my funding uh, for my real estate deals. So when you first started raising private money, how did you go about it? What are some of your favorite ways to raise private capital? I think when you're first starting, it's the hardest. And that's really where you utilize you know, the network you have, you know, the, the friends and family is the really the common way. Uh, we were fortunate early on that I had done some work with uh, some wealthy individuals that believed in me. And, um, and so they were investing in projects as we went on early. Uh, once you've got a track record and you're returning the funds, it becomes a whole lot easier. So it's the early startup is really probably the most difficult in, in my opinion, to get started. And, and you really, you need to do it with people that have relationships. You know, once you've got a track record, it's easier to raise money with the public, but until you have a track record relationship, it's really a relationship driven thing. It really is. And you just said a very, very important phrase. You said three words and those three words you said were believe in me. And it's been my experience in raising private money over all these years that 
our private lenders really are not investing in our deals. I mean, they're going to get, I mean, everything that I do is what we call one-offs. We got a single family house and a private lender, a couple of private lenders on that particular house. But at the beginning and even now it's my experience and see if you, if you agree with me, they're really not investing in our deals. They're really investing in us. They're investing and trusting us to get it done. You know, even though we give them uh, collateral, what's your take on that? I, I think you're spot on. I have, you know, most of my uh, wealth is reinvested in what, you know, deals I'm involved in, but I've invested in other deals. But 100% of the time, anything I've ever invested in, I'm investing in that relationship, that person, in my belief that they can do it. Because you can have the same business idea with two different people, and one could be a, a fantastic success and the other a dismal failure. And so I, I think you're spot on. I mean, in my own investing practices, I've only invested with people that I believe in and hope that they can make it happen. So when you started out, my guess is you might do things a little bit different today than when you first started. Um, were there any, you know, what have you changed in your methods of raising private capital? Are there any mistakes that you made when you started out that you could share with the audience that um, would be a value that if they're looking to raise private capital, don't do this instead of that, do this. <laughs> You know, I think the big difference between today and 15 years ago, 10 years ago, even is really confidence, confidence that you can execute and do it. I can remember early on, we, it was probably 2012 or 13. We were buying a, uh, a portfolio of assets. It was about $8 million. And the seller of that asset or the seller's representative, he wasn't sure we could do it. And he said, well, I want to come out and meet you guys and make sure you can actually perform. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, crap, you know, we're never going to get this deal done. And so he was going to fly out. And I met with a friend. We were subleasing a couple of offices in a friend's building. And, you know, we were stacked on top of each other. There was no room because it was all about, you know, how do we get a return for our investors and make more money? And so it's like, if he sees our office, there's zero chance. So I went to my friend and said, hey, can you pretend like I own this whole building and have the receptionist greet them? and then?" have her call me on my cell, like it's the intercom and I'll go out the back stairs and I'll come around and I'll come through the back door and use his, and use your uh, conference room. And it, it, you know, feel like that's going to give us confidence. So we did it and it was quite funny. We looked back on it, but uh, you know, it was just a lack of confidence. It was the issue for us. Um, but we, you know, we ended up doing the deal and made a lot of money on that deal. Um, but I, I think that's the important thing is you've got to believe in it. And if you don't believe in what you're doing, it's going to come right across to your investors. Absolutely. I mean, I say all the time, desperation has got a smell to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree with that statement. <laughs> and uh, so, yes. And, you know, um, a lot of new uh, real estate investors will, will ask me, they'll say, you know, Jay, how do I get the confidence? If I've never, you know, raised money before, how do I, how do I get the confidence? And advice that I give, I say, well, think about what you've already been successful doing. Leverage your past successes uh, and, and, you know, transfer them over to, you know, this activity of raising capital. And, 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 and there's a lot to be said for fake it till you make it as well. I remember, like it was yesterday, the very first conversation that I approached with a potential private lender. Um, you know, I had, I'd never raised any capital before just relied on the local banks. And, uh, I started using what I now call uh, Dale, the indirect method. In fact, I've, I've never actually asked anybody for money. I just asked for their help to spread the word, to let people know that I'm paying insane high rates of return. And when they hear somebody complaining about the volatility of the stock market or the low interest rates, they can get at the local bank. Would you refer them to me? That's what I did the very first time. And of course they inquired and they became one of my very first private lenders by just asking them to, you know, help me spread the word that now I've got a, an opportunity. And when I say the word opportunity, I think about the, the, the framework of not asking for money. I'm not begging, selling, chasing, persuading. I'm actually educating, you know, they're like got 47 private lenders right now and not one of them ever heard of private money. 
before I told them what it was. They never heard of how they could use self-directed IRAs and their retirement funds to invest and get tax deferred or tax free returns. And so it was all about leading with education. Uh, what's your, you know, you know what's interesting and with what you said, Jay, that I, I really love what, what you said is, you know, I can't say that I've ever done what you just, what you just taught directly, indirectly, maybe, but nobody wants to be sold. Nobody wants to be sold. Jay, you want to give me $5 million for this project? Nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to help. And you asked for help. You didn't sell them. And I think that's, I think that's a concept that you can't overstate. Nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to help. And you just asked for help. I think that's a concept we can all apply. Absolutely. Well, and the thing of it is, is, you know, one, one fear that real estate investors have when they're raising, when they're beginning to raise private money is this thing in the back of their head called, uh, you know, fear of rejection. And my response to that is how can you have a fear of rejection? If you're not asking anybody for anything, if you're not asking for money, <laughs> everybody wants to help. Right. But I'm not asking anybody for money. You can't be turned down. Like, you know, another question I get all the time, Dale is, well, how do I start? How do I start raising private money? Well, I can tell you how you start in my opinion, my experience is you got to own the real estate between your ears first <laughs> yes. before you, before you own real estate out there or you build new construction. Um, I mean the, the mindset, I, one thing I had to get my mind wrapped around Dale was in this world of raising private money, it's the 180 degrees different from borrowing money from the bank. In our world, when you raise private money, when I raise private money, we make the rules. There's yes. no negotiation. We set the interest rate. We, I mean, we are our own underwriter, <laughs> right? And it's like, that's the first thing I had to get straight in my mind is that I'm not going and getting on my hands and knees and putting my hands underneath my chin and saying, you know, please fund my deal or, you know, please fund whatever it is that I'm needing. It's all about offering the opportunity and teaching uh, versus, you know, applying and asking, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. I, yeah, that is, that is so true. And I think, I think for a lot of people, they can be intimidated by the process and be really pretty quick to give up that control and say, all right, you can make the rules. Exactly. And I think, I think too often we give up too early on a lot of this. Absolutely. So Dale, we have uh, two segments of our audience uh, listening or watching the show here. Uh, one segment, real estate investors, they want to raise private money. Uh, we talk about that, but another segment uh, listening to the show, they just want to be passive and, you know, investors, private lenders, if you will, and just want to sit back and, and watch their returns grow. So you've got a fund where you have, you, as you know, you've raised over a hundred million dollars uh, for your funds and your focus is on single family houses, I believe more so than apartments. So how about speak to the core differences between investing in single family um, houses versus investing in multi-family uh, uh, properties such as apartments and et cetera. Yeah, I think there's a couple parts of this. One thing to back up, we we actually have not had a fund the whole time. Most of our fundraising has been through, you know, an individual will invest, you know, an X amount of dollars in a project with us. And it was about three years ago, we allow all of our employees can buy houses at cost with the goal of helping them build personal wealth. And it was about three years ago, I was comparing some notes with one of our employees that really takes advantage of it and has built quite a portfolio of rentals um, that he's got wealth from. And we were comparing notes on the tax advantages of him being a W-2 employee and me being self-employed. And it really was distressing to me. Of Here, I'm trying to help them build wealth, but because of the way the tax code's written, I can accelerate that much faster than he can. And that, that, that was hard for me. And so... I started looking into what are ways that I can help him accelerate building his wealth the same way that I have. And ultimately what ended up happening is we started Central Capital Partners saying, I'm going to create a mechanism, a vehicle that these people I care about on my team can also accelerate their wealth building. Well, one thing led to another. And we said, why don't we open this up to anybody that wants to invest? You know, we've, we've worked with investors. We've raised a lot of capital. 
why don't we open this up and allow anybody, you know, whether it's our trade partners, whether it's friends or, or new friends that we make, let's open it up. So we just opened Central Capital Partners about eight months ago. Um, and, and so now anybody can. And, and you know, the goal is let's build wealth together. On the houses and the apartments, um, we do apartments. We like apartments. We're just not doing any today. There's a huge need for housing across the nation. However, what's happening is the people that would typically go into apartments are staying in consolidated households. And so they're not moving into the apartments at the same rate they would in the past. However, if you're focused on entry-level housing, that consumer is still buying houses. They're still going out. They're still buying houses because there's such a huge need. But you've got to be in the affordable because the interest rates at the time of this recording, you know, our interest rates are hovering plus or minus 7% on a mortgage rate. Now, that might not age well because that could be changing in the, in the coming weeks from this recording. However, you know, people that were buying houses at 3% could afford significantly more than they can at 7 And so they're affording less. And that's where that first time entry level affordable product is really important. And that's where we're seeing is the biggest gap in real estate. So that's where we're putting most of our energy is to try and fill that gap. So would you say most of the new construction that you're doing now is at that first time home buyer price point? We do have a little bit of empty nester. The, the couple that my kids have moved out, I'm tired of the stairs. I want to live on one level. Um, we do have some of that that we're still seeing quite a bit of success, but the vast majority of what we're doing is a first time buyer product. That's an affordable price point that they can get in and, and own their first home. So given the current market conditions that are going on right now, mortgage interest rates, of course, you make a good point. Uh, I think there's more than one reason why we're going to see mortgage rates come down pretty quickly. <laughs> um, uh, and I don't have a crystal ball, but yeah. that's, that, that's my, that's my guess anyway. But given the current market conditions, why do you think it's favorable to be investing in single family houses or, you know, your investors, your private lenders investing in your fund for that, say versus apartments? Well, right now, you know, an interesting thing is construction in the history of tracking this construction's first in and first out of every recession that we've seen. You know, there, there are one minor exception. You know, there's a lot of economists are saying we're going to we're looking towards a recession. Now, if that's true, the first time buyers still buy houses, you know, unless the wheels totally fall off our economy, we could see unemployment go up to seven and eight and nine percent. And there's still consumers for that entry level. When you're buying your second, and third and fourth home. Those are the people that will hold off saying, wait a minute, let's see what the economy is doing. Whereas the first time buyers keep going. And that's where we've said, let's put our energy in the first time buyers, because even if we hit a recession, they're going to still come. And on the flip side, if interest rates were to drop 2%, then all of a sudden, there's a whole huge demographic that could not afford a house at 7%, but now suddenly can afford a house at 5% that are going to come into the market and want to buy houses. And that group's even bigger than the group that can afford the 7%. And so that's where we said, well, let's put a lot of our energy right now into that first time affordable housing because no matter what happens in the next couple of years, there's going to be a need for that where that's not necessarily true for some of the other uh, real estate investments that we see. Yeah. One thing that I mentioned briefly a few minutes ago, um, I mentioned my 47 private lenders that uh, invest in our deals. Interestingly enough, over half of them are using their IRAs. They're using their retirement funds to invest with those retirement funds. And so a segment of our audience here, particularly in today's market, they got retirement funds and they may not be happy with the kind of returns that they're getting on their retirement funds. It may be in a, a former, you know, 401k at a previous employer, uh, maybe, you know, some type of pension retirement fund or whatever. Um, how about share some uh, strategies or insights that you're familiar with as to how people can use their IRAs to say, invest in your fund. We, I, I love, I love the ability to do that. We teamed up with uh, equity trust. They manage about 45 billion in the IRA world. And um, people can take their IRA money, transfer to equity trust and invest in our deals. I actually transferred my personal IRA and my wife's. It took me 13 minutes. 
you know, take somebody else a little bit longer because I knew the systems, I knew what, what everything was, and I had already reviewed the document. But 13 minutes, I was able to transfer those funds and invest it. I was speaking with my father and he's like, hey, let me do it. I'm like, dad, let's have fun Thanksgivings and not worry about talking business. And ultimately he convinced me, let, let me invest. I said, all right, let's, let's do this. And I was looking at his documents of where his IRA is. And I'm like, dad, you're not even keeping up with inflation. For the last three years, inflation is 5.21%. You're sub 5.21% by the time you factor in fees in your IRA. This is terrible. And, uh, you know, like any good dad would say, he says, well, that's why I want to invest with you, son. But so we, we transferred his over, um, pretty easy process that he can invest. And the beautiful thing is, is, you know, in my IRA, generally speaking, I'm investing in stocks that I know nothing about. Or, or that I think I know something about, but don't, or I'm investing in a money market that's more stable, but giving me terrible returns. And so many people want to invest in real estate, but they don't want to deal with the cockroaches or the broken down furnace. Whereas this is a great mechanism. People can invest their IRA, get a much better return through, you know, your fund's a great example. What we're doing is a great example. They get a, a much better return. And, you know, in our case, you get some pride of ownership. You actually have some ownership in that project. You could drive out there and physically see it. Whereas, you know, I can own Tesla stock, but I'm not sure Elon's going to invite me into the uh, warehouse to see what they're doing. Whereas some of these real estate deals, you invest your IRA, it's a tangible asset. You can go look at, you can feel it. You can tell your friends about it, uh, which I think is really pretty cool because real estate, that's where people build lives and make memories. Absolutely. Now, one thing that uh, your con your company, uh, Centra, does is you actually help and facilitate first time home buyers get their first home. You know, particularly in this challenging economic climate. How does your company help first time home buyers? I love that question. You know, as a company, our motto is we improve everything we touch, and. You know, I, I can't see, there's not a lot of ways you can impact lives like you can helping people get their first house. And, you know, one of the things we do is we really work on how do we make sure we have a really good, efficient machine that we can make these houses as affordable as possible and yet still have a very quality house. So we're constantly looking at how do we become more affordable. In the Minneapolis market, we have some of the most affordable housing and yet really excellent quality. There are other programs that we work with those buyers on. Um, there's some funding through USDA where people have limited down payment that we help them apply for those um, where they can get some down payment assistance. Uh, there's some interest rate buy downs that we do to help them um, buy those interest rates down so it makes it more affordable. But there's just so many ways to do it. But the first and foremost is really the affordability. You've got to have something that people can enjoy, they're proud of, they want to invite their friends and family over to see. And that, you know, meets what their income is. Uh, in the market where you are uh, build, having this new construction, uh, what is the range or the approximate uh, first time home buyer price point? We, we've got some stuff that starts as low as 320, but our, we range from 320 to about 450 with our average being at about 370 is where we're at, which you know, if we rewind five years ago, it's like, that is not affordable. That is not a first time, but in the Minneapolis market, um, we, we are under what the average is here on new construction by quite a bit. Right. Well, I want to make sure everybody gets the information, your contact information, uh, on your fund and et cetera. And, um, any other ways that people can follow up with you and continue the conversation, Dale. Yeah, we uh, centracapitalpartners.com is a great place to see where we're at um, and, and what we're doing, different opportunities. We keep that pretty current, um, really current, so people can see what opportunities we have to invest in. And there's just a ton of information there that they can learn about us. They can learn about our team, uh, our experience, and the projects that we have open for investment anytime. That's, that's the best place. I'm also pretty active on uh, LinkedIn, both our company and myself under Dale R. Wills or Centra Companies um, that, that people can make direct contact because we're all about um, making the world a better place and improving everything we touch. And so if we can be assistance to somebody that's trying to get going and, and be a, a listening ear, a lending hand, we'd love to do that as well. 
Again, uh, Dale's contact, uh, his website is www.centra, C-E-N-T-R-A, centracapitalpartners.com. And, of course, all of his contact information uh, will be in the show notes as well. Uh, Dale, I sense, I can hear it in your voice. I sense it in your spirit. I believe you've got a very, very strong spiritual foundation. Yes? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a big part of our life. Our whole family is uh, uh, very active in our faith, um, and that's a big part of who we are: is is serving and strengthening others that are around us. Uh, you know, and, and following, you know, what we learn in the New Testament is really a big part of us. Well, I sensed it because the Carol Joy, my wife, and I, uh, we've got the same foundation. Uh, the church is a very, very important part uh, of our lives uh, as well. So um, I wanted to bring that out. Dale, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, any parting words or comments or thoughts? No, it's been a lot of fun. And just, you know, if you're investing, real estate's a great place to invest. If you're trying to raise capital, don't give up. You know, when something doesn't work, just keep trying and do it. You know, and if you keep sticking with it, you'll you'll find a solution and, and you'll make it work. Thank you so much, Dale. And there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I really appreciate you joining us. Be sure to like and share and follow uh, whatever platform that you're watching or you're listening to. And with that, I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconnor.com slash moneyguide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.